It's uh, very nice to be here. Thank you, Lighters, for inviting us. Many, many interesting uh, talks, indeed. Uh, I, I really liked the, the presentation before because it, uh, it is very close to what we are doing. So I'm uh, Stavros, I'm uh, the technical officer uh, of Agraphs, and uh, I'm going to present you our plans to utilize blockchain technology for the agricultural insurance sector, but also how we plan to integrate it in, in our wider farm information system. So Agrox is a newly founded company. We are only three years old. We are based in Thessaloniki, that's in the northern part of uh, Greece. And uh, our team is mainly uh, software engineers and uh, agronomists uh, working to provide value-added services in the agricultural domain. We are using uh, earth observation data. I don't know if he's familiar with that, but earth observation is uh, actually the images taken from some point in the sky or from a satellite, images of the land, and then we try to extract features or recognize features in the land and uh, understand uh, differences, uh, differentiations based on uh, weather events and uh, extreme weather phenomena. So what we're doing is combine uh, Earth observation data and uh, advanced numerical modeling techniques in order to build a suite of services ranging from uh, digital farming to precision weather, all of those targeted in uh, either farmers or agricultural insurance or even the public authorities. The services that we are producing uh, are weather forecast services, so we cover for short term, seven days ahead, or seasonal forecasting up to six months ahead, near real time uh, forecasts and uh, climatology, which uh, is actually statistics of uh, the weather for the last uh, 60 years at any place in the globe. We are providing, we are producing also digital farming solutions, <coughs> such as farm advisory services, agricultural decision support systems, crop modeling services, etc. And for the last year, we have been working on uh, developing agricultural insurance solutions, which I'm going to touch in a bit. So this is a new project that uh, we are now working on, along with Etherisk. Etherisk is actually working on uh, on, the, on the blockchain technology in this project. Uh, again, we are trying to use Earth observation data in order to support the agriculture insurance uh, companies provide better, more reliable and cost-effective services. Some of the tools here, I'm not going through all of them, I'm just going through the ones that I like. So it's, uh, we have the damage assessment tools that we are preparing for, uh, for the insurance companies, that's mainly taking pictures before and after an event and uh, having the system trying to understand the changes in the ground and estimate the damage that has been done. This has been requested by cooperatives of ours, insurance companies, in order for them to better prepare the on-site inspections, or in some cases not have the inspections at all. The crop monitoring is uh, more or less uh, tools to ensure that the farmer is following proper practices. The climatology stats uh, is uh, again something that has been requested in order to assist uh, them in uh, defining their underwriting policies and determining uh, about areas that they are going to to create new policies about, and we are also using forecasts uh, through machine learning to, <coughs> to support that. Smart contracts, of course, we, we want, uh, upon, upon the verification of an event, we want to allow, allow a contract to be fulfilled, because apart from uh, the, the forecast that we're producing, we also have a, a verification process which uh, can trigger and verify in the system that something indeed has happened. Drug monitoring and pesticide alerts help in the monitoring prevention and uh, the early warning system helps uh, assess the risk and exposure. This is a very high level uh, diagram, I want all of you to get bored. So uh, I'm uh, just going through it uh, very briefly. We, you see on top it's uh, the data that we use. We, we first process, uh, we download and process all this data and generate uh, actually our new, let's say, raw data, which uh, has to do with vegetation indices, 
it's uh, NGBI, it's uh, biomass, uh, it's leaf area index, or some weather parameters, wind precipitation, evapotranspiration, and uh, agrogeological uh, data regarding uh, soil type or uh, the land use. Using all that information, we further analyze and uh, process, and we create our core products and functions that we as a company use and uh, enrich uh, day by day, project by project, or uh, whenever we, we get a chance. Using those products, we, we come to the, to the lowest level, which is the agriculture and agricultural insurance services that we provide. In this uh, diagram, we have also included uh, blockchain. We consider blockchain to be uh, a function of the system. We want to isolate uh, this functionality. We want to offer it as a tool to our developers or our analyzers to define which of the information of the system needs to be stored, needs to be handled by the blockchain. Okay, so all this for us is uh, our Agrops uh, service API. I just, I just compressed everything there, which is uh, something that we actually have done and we are very proud of. It is an internal API that we have created. We try to isolate all the complexity and all the repeating work that our developers are doing in order for us not to reinvent the world every time and try to build upon what we have already built. It is based on the custom protocol that we have developed, but we also support OGC and WS standards. This is a very easy thing to use. We want not only our developers to be using it, but also our agronomists to be able to boost our solutions and test new models and uh, not ask for the developer resources all the time. So the way we are uh, building, uh, this, is a, this is not a one-size-fits-all, you can see also the technology we're using there. This is something that uh, as we work, as we progress, we are building new services and some of them will eventually end up going in the upper level. And then we combine those with uh, different policies and different uh, workflows in order to offer new solutions. And I wanted to scare more people off. So this is an example of uh, a code. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate how simple we are making things. So all this is uh, performing several actions. It uh, downloads uh, satellite data. It chooses which uh, dials it needs to download. It tries to see if the data are available to the local cars. And if not, it is downloaded through Amazon or Copernicus or elsewhere. And then this entire gets calculated. After that, we can determine if we want to visualize it, if we want to store it somewhere, or if we want to send it on the, over on the blockchain. So from all these uh, services, we produce many information, many data, which can easily be integrated through the service that I mentioned. Uh, integrate those with the blockchain and uh, provide it uh, in uh, other applications as well. Our plan is to use, uh, to, to use it in our farm management uh, suite of tools, which cover from farm advisory services, integrated pest management and the monitoring of the CAP implementation. CAP is the common agricultural policy. It's a new regulation for the farmers. So we have uh, many information which is generated by our tools. We assume a lot of things about the, uh, the farmers from the earth observation uh, side. So we log all this information uh, and they have, they have to do regarding crop modeling, yield estimation, the probability of a pest or disease to occur. And then we also assume things about the the practice of the farmer. So we, we get to understand the irrigations, plowing events, or the applying of pesticides. We anticipate that all this information, they, uh, they, they can tell a story. They can actually tell the story of the, pro the farmer's product. And we can uh, build, build something like a transparency door to farm practices from the farmer himself or traceability of food safety for the end consumer, or even try to eliminate waste. So we, we believe that some of those information could end up in the blockchains in order to satisfy the different actors and, uh, and enhance, of course, uh, trust, security within all the system. Uh, let me also add that uh, this information, although it is uh, assumptions coming from our services and uh, the satellite or machine learning that we are doing, 
For some of them, the farmers need to actually verify it because they are obliged by law or by the cap, uh, or some of them get to be verified by sensors. So we automatically can have a very precise idea of what is going on. That's it. Thank you. That's 10 minutes. Thank you, Stavros. I, I just want to add, um, you didn't mention it, Beacon is actually an EU-funded research project and it will start in February next year. So, um, and we are very happy to be part of that together with other webs and um, uh, be part of an EU-funded research project. Um, here is one question to me and then I hand over to the audience. Why, why are we doing this still research? So, so can you tell a bit more about the maturity level? Where, where are we with this? And, and how long will it take until we, have, we see real benefits for consumers or for farmers? Well, regarding the farm management information systems, we are offering services there for the last three or four years. Uh, even before uh, Agrops actually started, because we were a group of people working together and we decided to cooperate. So we now pilot test with 400 farmers around Greece and uh, the wider area, especially very close to us in the Saloniki. And we have a very good understanding of uh, how the technology works, uh, if, if it's good for them, and uh, how we can uh, make it even better. So we try to combine also machine learning and uh, additional things, but even to the point that we are up, they, they seem quite uh, happy with the results. So we actually anticipate that the same similar thing will uh, eventually happen with agricultural insurance companies, because it's more or less the same logic, the same algorithms. Any questions from the audience? In the back. We have one question in the back. Please, you need to stand up and shout because the microphone range is limited. Um, I presume a lot of this is Payments out to people who depend on the information that you get in. Uh, how would you expect with an IoT network? Uh, would it just be what you envision now? I think so. So, uh, we, we, the information for us comes from uh, our algorithms, and uh, what we understand that is happening, uh, that uh, a severe phenomena has actually happened, a storm or something, and something has flooded. So we, if it comes to a payment, then you should have another way to verify it. So I think insurance companies would never actually allow for it to be automatic. They would have to wait for a claim first from the client, or otherwise they would like to have some also IoT type installed uh, locally in order for them to allow for any payments to be released. This is one more question, please. You need to speak uh, Well, for the of course, it all depends on the resolution. Again, this is something that you can scale up easily. I mean, it's not uh, like we're doing something uh, very productive here. Many people are doing it. Currently, we are having uh, all Europe scanned in a 9 by 9 kilometer resolution. And for Greece and the specific areas that we work on, we are on 3 by 3 kilometers. Thank you. So, thank you, Stavros. Please give a uh, hand of applause.